the mothers here and the mothers in Cuba. And the Federation of Women in Cuba that are trying to better their, their stay in Cuba. Um, we're going to understand a little bit more because I don't know too much about Cuba. All I know is that they have an embargo and that's as far as it goes. But I'm going to learn. And all of y'all are going to teach me, okay? So again, welcome and enjoy your stay. So we have with us Ariel Hernandez, who is the first secretary of the Cuban Mission to the United Nations. So we, will, we will begin the program letting them speak to you, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> um, could you take that's the, move the microphone down to them? Bueno, eh, buenas tardes. Eh, disculpen la, la demora, pero estábamos eh, trabajando en un asunto muy importante para nuestro país. Que se presentó de momento y tuvimos que dedicar toda la mañana y bueno, y parte de la tarde en este asunto. Just arose, and we had to spend all the morning and part of the afternoon uh, addressing it. Independientemente que la distancia es bien larga. And uh, apart from the, the distance of it to, uh, to make it here. Bueno, como decía Mary Alice, eh, well, mi nombre es Maritzel González. As uh, Mary Alice said, my name is Maritzel González. Y eh, trabajo en el Departamento de Relaciones Internacionales de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas. And I work in the Department of International Relations of the Federation of Cuban Women. Organización que en estos momentos, junto con otros eh, integrantes de otras eh, organizaciones del país, and uh, my organization, along with uh, members of other organizations uh, from Cuba. Eh, por ejemplo, la Unión de Juristas de Cuba. For example, the, union, the National Union of uh, Jurists of Cuba. La Unión Nacional de Escritores y Artistas de Cuba. The National Union of Writers and Artists of Cuba. La Asociación Cubana de Naciones Unidas. Uh, the Cuban Association of the United Nations. El CNSEX. The uh, National Center for Sexual Education of Cuba. Es decir, todas estas organizaciones estamos eh, en la ciudad de Nueva York participando en la 59 sesión de la Comisión Jurídica y Social de la Mujer. Uh, all these organizations are participating here in New York at the UN, the 59th session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women. Y preside la delegación la Secretaria General de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas. And at the head of our delegation is the General Secretary of the Cuban Women's Federation. Teresa Amareyes Bowie. Uh, Teresa Amareyes Bowie. Y ustedes se preguntarán, bueno, y, y, y por qué de tantas personas solo hemos venido dos, ¿no? A este encuentro. And so you might ask yourself, of all these people that are part of our delegation, why well, just the two of us are here with you today? Es que nuestra estancia en la ciudad de Nueva York mmm, 
como es una vez al año, tratamos de aprovecharla al máximo. Uh, it's because our visit here in New York is only once a year and we try to use it to the maximum of the time available. Y hay compañeras y compañeros que están realizando otras actividades en estos momentos. And we have brothers and sisters who are carrying out other responsibilities at the same time. Bueno, eh, el tema de la, de la Comisión en Naciones Unidas este año es precisamente los 20 años de Beijing. And the subject of discussion at the uh, session of the UN Commission this year is 20 years since the Beijing Conference on the Status of Women. Es decir, en 1995, en la ciudad de Beijing, se llevó a cabo la Cuarta Conferencia Mundial sobre la Mujer. Uh, in 1995, in Beijing, the fourth uh, World Congress on Women took place. Y eh, precisamente en esa conferencia se decidió que los gobiernos eh, prepararan planes de acción para el adelanto de la mujer. And it was decided at that conference that the governments of the different uh, countries should prepare plan, action plans uh, in relation to women. Eh, es decir, planes de acción para poderle dar seguimiento a esta conferencia de Beijing. That is action plans to follow up on the Beijing conference. En el caso de Cuba, en el año 1997, a propuesta del gobierno de, de, de la República de Cuba y de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas. Um, in 1997, uh, at the urging or at the proposal of the Cuban government and the Cuban Women's Federation, se preparó un plan de acción nacional. A national action plan was developed para darle seguimiento a esta conferencia. To, uh, up on the, on the Beijing este plan eh, se le da seguimiento a través de seminarios nacionales que se, se realizan en todo el país. Um, this work has been carried out including with through national seminars carried out across the country. Y precisamente el pasado junio, es decir, disculpen, en junio del 2013, se llevó a efecto el tercer seminario de seguimiento. And in June of 2013, we had the third uh, seminar um, following up on Beijing. En, este, en estos seminarios están involucrados todos los sectores de la, de la, de la sociedad cubana. These seminars involve all sectors of Cuban society. Es decir, todos los institutos, los ministerios, las organizaciones. And, and that involves all the Cuban institutions, government ministries, Cuban organizations. Y nuestra organización tiene la, la, la orientación, es decir, el deber de chequear si este plan está siendo seguido por todas esas instituciones. And the job, the responsibility of our organization is to check and monitor that whether this action plan is being carried out by all the different institutions. Este plan de acción nacional tiene, cuenta con 90 medidas. Uh, this, our national action plan includes uh, 90 different measures. Y les voy a poner un ejemplo porque quizás ustedes digan, bueno, ¿y qué, de qué está hablando? And so you might ask, so what, what exactly is she talking about? So I'll give you an example. Eh, uno de los de las medidas eh, de este plan es mujer y empleo. Uh, one of the measures is, is women and jobs or women and employment. Es decir, aquí se le se, se chequea todo lo que está sucediendo con relación al empleo y las mujeres. And so we check on everything that has to do with women and employment. Todos los derechos que tienen las mujeres con relación a al trabajo. All the rights that women have in relation to work, uh, employment. Y nosotras chequeamos que no se viole ninguno de estos derechos. And we monitor that none of these rights uh, are violated. Otra de las medidas es mujer y medios de comunicación. Another measure has, is called uh, women and um, communications media. Cómo se lleva a través de los medios de comunicación eh, todas la, las el trabajo, ¿no? que se realiza y que no hay afectación hacia la figura de la mujer. How the work of the media is carried out and, and how it's done in a way that does not uh, damage the, the image of women. Bueno, en fin, eh, estamos aquí para poder mostrar en, 
en el escenario de Naciones Unidas, cuál ha sido el avance de las mujeres cubanas durante todos estos 20 años. And so we are here to show at the UN conference the progress that Cuban women have made over these past 20 years. Y, y consideramos que, eh, que ha sido muy fructífero porque en Cuba mm, ha logrado muchos de los eh, objetivos de, de esta conferencia de Beijing. And we consider this uh, to be very fruitful because Cuba has Uh, achieved many of the goals of the Beijing conference. Es decir, tiene adelantado, como pudiéramos decir, muchas de las de los objetivos de la conferencia. And I, we could say that uh, we have advanced many of the goals of this conference. Y que podemos percibir que en estos escenarios la mayoría de los países no tienen garantizado el avance de las mujeres en la sociedad. And we can say that other, most other countries have not guaranteed the, the advance of women in the, around these questions. En el pasado viernes mm, tuvimos la oportunidad de celebrar un, un panel sobre Cuba 20 años después de Beijing, avances y desafíos. Um, just last Friday we were able to hold a panel out there at the UN called Cuba 20 years after advances and challenges. Y recuerdo que una de las preguntas estaba bien interesante, ¿no? one question was very interesting. Nos preguntaron que si ya teníamos todos estos caminos adelantados, ¿qué más debíamos hacer? And the, I, we were asked if you've made progress around all these, down all these roads, what is left ahead, what is left before you? Yo creo que siempre tenemos algo que hacer para eh, poder garantizar los derechos de las mujeres. Uh, I think that we always have something to do to continue to advance women's rights. El día que nos, deteng que nos detengamos, the creo day, que perderíamos estos derechos. I think the day that we stop working towards this, we would lose our rights. Aunque me tocó la oportunidad, igual que Ariel. Uh, although I, it took, uh, I had the opportunity along with Ariel. De vivir en un país cuyo gobierno y Estado eh, aprueban, apoyan y defienden todos los derechos humanos de las personas. Uh, that both myself and Ariel live in a country where the, the government and the state support and defend all uh, human rights of all. Y para esto eh, se realizan infinidad de programas desde 1959, después del triunfo de la Revolución Cubana, And uh, this has been done through uh, a whole number of programs that have been carried out since 1959 with the victory of the Cuban Revolution. Donde las mujeres cubanas no solo hemos sido beneficiadas por estos programas, sino hemos sido protagonistas de los programas. Uh, in which Cuban women have not only benefited from all these programs, but we have been leading actors in bringing them about. Eh, nuestra organización es una organización de masas Our organization is a mass organization que agrupa a más de 4 millones de mujeres uh, which organizes more than 4 million women pero por supuesto no comenzamos así of course we didn't begin this that way después de 1959 en el país existían varias organizaciones femeninas uh, after 1915, the 1959 victory, there were several different women's organizations. Y estas mujeres eh, quisieron ser partícipes de los programas revolucionarios. And these women wanted to be participants in the revolutionary programs. Y, se, y percibieron que ellas, desde sus organizaciones, les era muy difícil poder participar en los mismos. And they found that it was very difficult Uh, through their own individual organizations to participate in this. Para estos, ellas mismas decidieron organizarse en una sola organización. And they decided to join into a single organization. Y es cuando surge la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas el 23 de agosto de 1960. And that's when the, the Cuban Women's Federation was born on August 23, 1960. En aquella época eran alrededor de 70 mil mujeres las que integraban la organización. At that time, we were 70,000 women were members of the organization. 
Por supuesto, a través de los años, la población femenina ha creado una mayor conciencia y eh, ha decidido pertenecer y ser representada por una organización. Uh, of course, over these years, the, the female population of our country has acquired a greater consciousness and has decided to be represented in, in this organization. Y es por eso que en la actualidad tenemos más de 4 millones de mujeres. And that's why we, we have today more than 4 million women. Members. Esto representa el 90% de la población femenina mayor de 14 años. And this represents more than 90% of Cuban women 14 years old and, and older. Eh, uno de los objetivos de nuestra organización, y yo diría que es en nuestro primer objetivo, es defender la revolución cubana. Uh, one of the goals of our organization, I would say the number one goal, is to defend our revolution. Que es la que nos ha permitido eh, y nos ha creado las oportunidades y las posibilidades de poder desarrollarnos en los diferentes sectores de la sociedad cubana. Uh, and it's the revolution which has allowed us and has created the opportunities and the possibilities for us to develop um, in every sector of, society, of human society. Y por supuesto, también tenemos que defender, continuar defendiendo los derechos de las mujeres. And of course we have to continue to defend women's rights. Eh, defendemos los derechos sexuales y reproductivos de las mujeres. We defend women's sexual and reproductive rights. Y seguimos trabajando con la familia, es and, decir, al interior de las familias. And we keep working uh, with the families, that is, within the families. Porque no hacemos nada trabajando con la, solo con las mujeres. It's not enough to work simply with women. Hay que crear una conciencia. We have to create a consciousness. En toda la población, in, es decir, en hombres y mujeres. In the whole population that is both among men and women. Para que nuestros objetivos puedan ser logrados. So that our objectives can be achieved. Y por eso tenemos una, una labor de, de, de orientación, de, de guía hacia la familia cubana. So we have a, a job, a work, uh, to orient and guide uh, Cuban families. Porque también tenemos que romper con todos los estereotipos que nos quedan. Because we still have to break down all the different stereotypes that, exist, that per, uh, continue. Y para nosotras es muy importante esa unión de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas con todas las organizaciones e instituciones del país. And for us, the union, uh, the, the joint work of the Federation with the, all the different organizations and institutions in Cuba is so important. Me llamaba la atención, o sea, no es que me llamara la atención, es que me sentí feliz y satisfecha de eh, poder apreciar en este panel que realizamos el viernes cómo eh, diferentes organizaciones de la sociedad civil cubana nos unimos para que nuestro panel, el panel de Cuba, saliera a la perfección. And I was Rather, I was very happy to see when we were on this panel last Friday how the members of all the different Cuban organizations worked together and united to bring out the, uh, the work of the Cuban panel. Bueno, yo creo que por ahora eh, voy a recesar mi cuerpo hogares. <laughs> so I, I think at this point I'll, uh, I'll end my, my remarks and Ariel will say a few words. Diplomática cubana aquí en Nueva York ante las Naciones Unidas. 
what is the focus, the focus of the work of the Cuban Mission in the United Nations? Nuestra misión trabaja para poner, divulgar los mensajes de la revolución cubana en el escenario que representa a las Naciones Unidas. Uh, the work of the Cuban mission at the United Nations is to spread the messages of the Cuban revolution uh, on the international arena represented at the UN. Las Naciones Unidas están representadas por 193 gobiernos del mundo. The UN is represented uh, by 193 different uh, governments of the world. Cuba es uno de ellos. Cuba is one of them. Nosotros aprovechamos esta oportunidad para poder expresar en este escenario la realidad cubana. And we use the opportunity of this stage to express the message of the Cuban Revolution. Una de las realidades más importantes es lo que expresaba mi compañera. And one of the most important facts is what my compañera was talking about. Los grandes logros y los retos que tiene hoy la mujer en Cuba. The great achievements as well as the challenges that Cuban women face today. A esto también damos divulgación a los logros y retos de la juventud y la niñez cubana. Uh, we also tell the truth about the, what has been achieved and the challenges related to young people and children in Cuba. Y así a cada una de eh, nuestros sectores de la sociedad, cómo nosotros vamos desarrollando nuestro programa político, nuestros programas sociales y nuestros programas económicos. And the same is true of all the different sectors of our society, how we develop the political, social, and economic uh, progress for everyone. Pero al mismo tiempo, en nuestra misión, en la Nación Unida, tenemos un segundo rol. But also, in the United Nations, we play a second kind of role. Y es poder construir puentes con la sociedad norteamericana. And that is to build bridges with American society. Tenemos excelentes relaciones con uh, we have excellent relations with different religious congregations. Sector de la comunidad académica y universitaria. With the academic and university uh, community. Sociedad civil. With civil society. Pero sobre todo con la comunidad norteamericana aquí en Nueva but especially with the American community here in New York. And that's why it's so important for us to be able to share this afternoon with you today. To share with you what is the reality that, we're, that we are living through in Cuba today. One of the things that we continue to reinforce and explain at the, United, at the United Nations and outside the United Nations is to explain the causes and the impact that the blockade by the U.S. government against Cuba has had. De hecho, aquí en Estados Unidos, los medios de prensa suelen llamarlo embargo. Uh, usually, the media in the United States tend to call it an embargo. Uh, but we consider this uh, term to be too, a little too euphemistic, a little too weak. Because this blockade is enforced by a law uh, passed by U.S. Congress. And it has an impact on all sections of Cuban society. It has an, a negative impact on Cuban women, uh, on our children and youth. It has an impact on our public health system and our, our economic development. And even has an impact on our diplomatic relations. No existe un punto dentro de la vida cotidiana de Cuba que no tenga un reflejo del impacto del bloqueo. There is not any aspect of daily life in Cuba where there is not some some aspect that is affected by the U.S. blockade. Como todos 
quizás pueden haber visto en las últimas semanas, desde el 17 de diciembre ha sido noticia que los gobiernos de Cuba y de Estados Unidos hayan proclamado la voluntad de comenzar un proceso de restablecimiento de relaciones. And you've all probably seen the news uh, since December 17th about the statements by the governments of both our countries um, about beginning the process of establishing diplomatic relations. Muchas personas, incluso personas con buena voluntad hacia Cuba, many people, including people of goodwill towards Cuba, han asumido como este anuncio entre ambos gobiernos como que el bloqueo concluyó. Have us, uh, have assumed from hearing this news that the blockade against our country has ended. And we can never get tired of explaining uh, that that blockade against our country remains intact, unchanged. Lo único que está sucediendo es que el Departamento de Estado y el Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores de Cuba están conversando para restablecer las relaciones diplomáticas. The only thing that is happening right now is that the United States State Department and the Cuban Foreign Ministry are discussing, are in the process of discussing the reestablishment of diplomatic relations. Para que el bloqueo concluya y el proceso de normalización de la relación entre los dos países se logre, es un proceso que tomará tiempo. To end the blockade and to begin a, a real process of normalization of, of relations is something that will take time. Nosotros reconocemos que el gobierno de Estados Unidos para asumir la posición de iniciar este proceso ha tenido gestos valientes. Ha tenido gestos valientes. Uh, uh, we recognize that the US government to take this position of beginning normalizations has made some uh, courageous gestures. Porque definitivamente existen fuerzas de derecha que no quieren que el bloqueo concluya. Uh, because there are right-wing forces that do not want the blockade to end. But there is a point that we will always insist and, and try to make clear. El gobierno de Estados Unidos quiere concluir con el bloqueo. The U.S. government wants to end the blockade. El gobierno de Estados Unidos ha dado la orden de revisar la inclusión de Cuba en la lista de países que auspician el terrorismo. The U.S. government has given the order of reviewing uh, the uh, the placement of Cuba on the list on the U.S. list of uh, states that sponsor terrorism. Las acciones, órdenes ejecutivas que ha dado el presidente de los Estados Unidos para entender las licencias de las personas autorizadas a viajar a Cuba. The actions and executive orders that have been issued by the president to uh, extend licenses, uh, authorizing, allowing people to travel to Cuba from the United States. Incluyendo este proceso de restablecer relaciones diplomáticas, including the uh, reestablishing of diplomatic relations process, tiene una intención política muy clara dicha por el propio gobierno de los Estados Unidos. Uh, it has a very clear political purpose that has been expressed clearly by the President of the United States. El gobierno está en contra del bloqueo. The government is against the blockade. Pero de todas formas, el objetivo político es Derribar es cambiar el sistema político en Cuba. But the political objective of the U.S. government is to overthrow, it's to change the... Uh, el, ¿Qué político? The, el, the political system of our country. Correcto. Es cambiar la forma, pero mantener los mismos objetivos. It's to change the forms, but to maintain the same, their same political objective. Lo que va a suceder definitivamente es que con esa voluntad se va a enfrentar a la voluntad del pueblo de Cuba de defender la revolución. Uh, in pursuing this task, the U.S. government will run up against the political will of the determination of the Cuban people to defend the revolution. Nosotros siempre decimos que no vivimos en una sociedad perfecta. We always say we don't live in a perfect society. Tenemos montones de retos económicos y sociales que seguir haciendo. We have a, a lot of economic and political challenges to overcome. Nosotros somos los primeros críticos de la revolución cubana. We are the first critics of the Cuban revolution. Pero quiero decirles algo. But I want to say one thing. El hecho de que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos haya accedido 
a comenzar un proceso de restablecimiento de relaciones con Cuba. But I do want to say one thing. The fact that the U.S. government has conceded to begin uh, the process of dis uh, discussing political relations with Cuba es una victoria del pueblo cubano Cuban people, por haber resistido más de 50 años for having persisted for more than 50 years, una política consciente y hostil contra el propio pueblo cubano a conscious and hostile policy against the Cuban people. y por primera vez el gobierno de Estados Unidos se sienta a negociar con el gobierno revolucionario de Cuba and for the very first time the U.S. government sits down to negotiate with the government of revolutionary Cuba es la primera ocasión que el gobierno de Estados Unidos reconoce formalmente al gobierno revolucionario de Cuba en 56 años de revolución. It's the first time the U.S. government formally recognizes the revolutionary government of Cuba in 56 years. Por eso... Por eso siempre explicamos que las victorias del pueblo cubano y de los amigos de la revolución cubana And that's why we always explain that this is a victory of the Cuban people and of the friends of, the, of, the Cuban, of Cuba. Porque todos ustedes de alguna manera nos han acompañado en esta resistencia. And because all of you in one way or another have been with us in, uh, in this resistance. Eh, no quiero entenderme, seguramente van a querer hacer preguntas, estamos aquí disponibles. Así que I, I didn't want to go on so that we can have time for questions that, that you will have. Time. If their sons says this is not a time, 
I say it's the time for all to stand up, for our love, losing our love, preparing for the future generation to not face the same thing we face. I'm telling you, this is very ridiculous. Why? Because they people want to take people's life. They just go home free. They stay got paid. They never be in jail. You think they will repeat or they can repeat? They will repeat. If they know they take somebody's life, they can't build their life. They know their family will suffer. Government will take their pension. They will be in jail. Believe me, they will take time. They will be careful. All the mothers you see have this, they will never be the same. Ask Mrs. Biden. Will never be the same. They kill one and destroy the rest of the family. It's enough. This is enough. Enough is enough. We can't stop until we find the justice. It's the time. Not for our loss, losing our love already. For the other people who come in. If we live like this, nobody will talk. It will stop like this. The system is not good. I'm happy to have the Kibo delegation here to listen to the mother crying to them what we're facing here. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tanya Brown Dickerson Goodman. Brandon Tate Brown was my son. In Philadelphia is where we live. My son on a Sunday evening came, ate dinner, watched the Eagles play, fell asleep because he was disgusted they was losing. <laughs> he woke up at 11.30 to watch the rest of the game. I came downstairs and saw that my son was asleep on my couch and something said, kiss him. And I didn't. My son left my home after the Eagles game went off around quarter to 12 midnight, somewhere in there. And he went to pick up a female friend. He took her back to his place. They played the game for a couple hours, Xbox. He went to take her home around 2.30. After he dropped her off, the police said they pulled my son over in Philadelphia for driving with no headlights. I was on my way to work 6.30. I was parking at my job and heard on my radio in the car, black male, 26 years old, gunned down by police on the 6600 block of Frankfurt Avenue, driving a white Dodge Charger believed to be stolen with out-of-state Florida tag. Well, immediately I knew that was my son, because my son was at my house that night. He drives up for a rental company. They allow him to rent cars to get back and forth through the different county of where he worked back to Philadelphia. I knew that it was the car, because it was a white Dodge Charger with Florida out-of-state tags. I had to call around different districts to find out who had my son, because I was calling his phone crying. Please pick up the phone, Brandon. Please, Brandon wouldn't pick up the phone. I called the 15th district in Philadelphia, who is very well known for being racist. These are the same police that had told me, monkey, go back where you come from. Why don't you go back where you come from? I've lived in this neighborhood with Brandon for 20 years, and we've always dealt with that district as being racist. I said, did you kill my son? Do you have my son? The lady eventually, the police officer, said, yeah. Well, needless to say, at my job, I must have rolled all over the floor, screaming and crying in disbelief. They would not give us the police officer's names. I do not know their names today. I have been protesting since the day my son was murdered, December the 15th, 2014. Family, 
me and a lawyer got into internal affairs. They deemed the police officers free of any charges. Internal affairs did it, so did the police department. Our district attorney, Seth Williams, has the case now. He has not done, um, he's, he has not declared them clear yet. Brandon, they said, when he complied, he got out the car as they asked. Then they said that there was a struggle. And they said, my son ran to the right side of the car to open the door to reach inside for a gun that they say they saw when they was approaching him. And that's when they shot my son in the back of the head. Now, I didn't believe that story. If anybody knows the TV show Scandal, I feel like she replicated what she heard about my son, because that's exactly how it happened. My son was beaten, gashes in his head, in his face. I saw a video watching him run around like a little child from a beaten with a belt from a parent. They were slinging him around by his hoodie, and they was just dragging him. He passed out. You see his body flaring and go limp. He ran again from the police, back and forth across the street. I saw the video that they won't release to the public or my lawyer. They let us view it at Internal Affairs, but we couldn't, you know, take notes or have the video turned over to my lawyer. My son fell as he was running from them in the street, face down. But they told the news that my son struggled with them, reached in on the right side, opened that door to go for a gun. And my son's body was in the street. But on the news, he was dragged from the street to the right side where the car door was open. And I saw the officer open it, according to the video. And they laid my son there. They staged my son's demise. I knew it from day one. So I've been fighting ever since. Now, I'm sitting here because I want my story heard too. We as citizens of the US, we the people, not the Fraternal Order of Police of New York, not the Fraternal Order of Police of Philadelphia, none of that. We the people includes us along with them. And anytime we break a law, we have to pay for that. So anytime a, a police officer goes out of protocol, and harm someone, should they not have to pay? Should they not be penalized? If I break rules on my job, there's disciplinary actions. I drive a school bus. I cannot hit a child even if they beat me to death. Or I'm gonna lose my job. There has to be accountability for these type actions. There has to be huge masses of people coming together. Not just us, but the black men that it's happening to. The younger adults, how do we draw them in to take concern because when I saw Mike Brown, that officer was no longer indicted. I went in my bathroom and I said, please Jesus, help me. I have to fight. I want to fight for citizenship rights. We have rights here in America. Help me, Lord. Little did I know when I prayed for that, 17 days later, my son would be assassinated by the Philadelphia police. He was my oldest son. He taught me how to be a mother. He was 26 years old. I knew how to be a mother because of him. You took my son from me, and you want to dismiss it because I grew up in the ghetto area, and you thought I had no courage or knowledge to come and stand against you. I don't only want to stand for Brandon Tate Brown. I want to stand for Mike Brown. I want to stand for Eric Garner. I want to stand for Tate Brown. Story. 
worry, we get people encouraged to take the time to care enough about all of us. We come together like when the police get shot. They come out in huge masses. Why can't we do that? Just the 50 of us sitting here. Because now you know somebody else's story from Philadelphia. Now I know Baja story from New York. I know Jerome Reed's story from Bridgeton, New Jersey. This has to stop. And people, we got to do it together. It is we the people, not the FOP. We the people. Thank you.
They was trying to get him for a, a warrant that he had, put it like that. And he was running and he had a gun and shot at three police officers. So they locked him up and he served 13 years in jail for that. Okay? When he, before he was released, he met this lady in, in jail and she talked to him and bamboozled him and told him if he get out, she, that they could get married and he can do this and la da 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 da. So he got out. But that's here nor are there. They took and went to his background because he shot at the police officer. He was a threat to officer death. How could you be a threat to someone when you don't have a weapon and your hands are up? You understand? I don't think what they did to my son was fair. And my, my oldest son can talk and tell you more than I can because he, he keeps up, I keep my right and left hand, and he keeps informed of everything that goes on with my son. They were tight. We are a real close-knit family. I have three boys. My other son is in Ohio. Unfortunately, he's not here. If he was here, he'd do the same thing. He would explain what's going, what went on with my son. Here's your own. Let me show him read. <laughs> How you doing? My name is Sean Reed. Sean Reed, brother. My little brother didn't deserve nothing. The police did to him. I got charges too. Do that mean if I go outside that I don't, that they got the right to shoot me down too? I don't think so. All I want is like, come on, people, like we this is these our streets. We're gonna let them do what they wanna do to us. We can take them back. We ain't gotta be violent about it. Come on, this, this right here is bringing a lot of people together right here. This is time to wake up. Look at all these pictures over here. This is crazy. This enough is enough. We don't need no more, no more, no more. Can't do this no more. I can't even talk about it. I haven't slept since my brother got killed. That was December 30th, last year. I won't, I don't think about, I'll be able to sleep until Amen. That's all I got to say. Amen. I'm sitting here now. You know this is really getting to me, right? My name is Willie Beyond. Most of y'all know me in here. My son, Malcolm Ferguson, was murdered March 1st of 2000. Since the 1st of 2000 to this day, I have been in the street. For the same problem. The problem is not getting better, if anything is getting worse. When my son was promoted, they tried to say he went for the cop's gun. The DA in the Bronx, Robert Johnson, goes, he shouldn't have went for the gun. I said, show me the fingerprints on the gun. Okay, they took that out. Then he goes, why don't you just go ahead, raise the rest of your kids, be a mother to your kids, and Stop letting this get to you. I'm like, do you have a son? He goes, yes, this will never happen to my son. I said, excuse me? So I had to leave that man alone. I told him I wanted answers. The answer he gave me was, oh, it was a struggle. And the gun accidentally went off. Like this mother over here. I couldn't go identify my son's body no more. I had to send my sister. When he came to the funeral parlor, I saw the exit where the bullet entered. The medical examiner said the gun was directly on him. It blew his brain out. That's how determined this cop was in murdering my son. During the time of trying to find out why Luis Rivera, uh, the NYPD, murdered my son, he says, he don't know. What do you mean you don't know? My lawyer asks him, what do you mean you don't know? He says he knew Malcolm had no gun, he didn't fear him. So, and then he goes, oh, I was reaching for this famous thing I hear now. I was reaching for the taser. And I grabbed my gun. The two things, it's totally different. So my lawyer says to him, you don't know the difference between your taser and your gun. We knew the story was a lie. So um, then my lawyer had did a second autopsy. 
And he told me that my head, my son's head was pressing against something hard. I said, if you ever did not murder my son alone. His brother was six feet. My son was six one. <coughs> they had my son on his knees like they was going to handcuff him to arrest him. Whoever was in that building at that time. And that's when he blew his brains out. They come to me, the lawyers kept saying to me, Miss Young, why are you doing this to yourself? Why don't you just let us get you a settlement and you and your kids could go back to your life. I'm like, what? He said, why do you put yourself through this? I said, goodbye. Yeah. I went and got another lawyer. They came with the same conversation. Yeah. So finally, I um, heard about this other lawyer. I called him up. I had like an almost two hour conversation with him. His name was Seth Harris. He says to me, you know, Miss Young, you seem very determined. I'm going to take your case. And he did when he was able to prove the innocence of my son. Thank you. The problem with a lot of these lawyers today, they just want to hurry up, get whatever money yeah. they can get. They're not worried about the pain <coughs> of the family. Mm -hmm. They only, like our mighty friend Charlton, he's not worried about the pain of the family. Because if he was, we might not be in this same position. My problem here is when we went to a, um, a panel in John Jay and talking about the Cuban Five. Mm -hmm. And I listened to the Cuban Five story. I said to them, let us meet the, the Cuban Five mothers. Mother to mother, we need to reach out to these mothers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were like, are you serious? I said, they're mothers like us. <laughs> our problem is we lost our kids. <coughs> they come here to the States to visit their loved ones and they're denied. So it's still they without their loved ones. While we were trying to arrange that, Obama released us the other three. That was a good thing. But I still say, we still would love to meet the Cuban Five Mothers. Yeah. I'd like to welcome the Federation of Women, Cuban Women to New York. years and the stories get worse and worse every day. We now started a group called Mothers Cry for Justice because my thing is, no matter how you lose your child, if it's gun violence, gang violence, whatever, our kids are murdered through gun violence because it's the guns that murdered our son. It was just done by a police officer. The problem is what's done about it. We've never admitted to murdering my son, but yet, Robert Johnson, the DA, says that's not evidence for a criminal trial. Like she said, if that had been you or me, we would have been never left the courtroom. We would have been in jail. But you telling me this cop openly admitted to murdering my son for no reason, and he's still a cop today on this force. I've been talking to other lawyers. I don't give up. And I recently learned some new stuff. So I'm going to have to back down on some stuff and go after what I just learned to go after Rivera. People tell me, Juanita, why are you still going after him? He already got his pension. That's not my problem. I, I can't make his life comfortable. Mm. You know, he got his pension, hey, I don't have my son. So you go to jail, your family's away from you and let you let them, you feel how it feels, regardless. But what they did here today, I think it's really, and the turnout, because ever since Michael Brown, I went to Ferguson too with Michael Brown. Let me tell you, you wouldn't sit in a room in, in Ferguson like we sitting here. The cops in Ferguson, I was so stressed, I couldn't wait to get back on that plane. Because the way cops, the way they harassed you, the way they came at you, they didn't want you to be able to function. That's why they do what they do out there. I see why people have such a problem. And people even said to me, well, neither you come from New York. Why in New York people don't take the street? Why are y'all not doing more? I'm like, I can't answer that for you. But what happened? People now say we had enough. And I'm seeing Tiny tell my story. Yeah, I got to talk to you. And what's your name again? Sheila. 
Miss Bach, me and Miss Bach, we, we, we know this has to stop. We the mothers and the family members, we thank all of y'all for coming out for the Federation of Cuban Women, for hearing our stories. Because like Bayez you knows, she's been doing this for 20 years. And how is her repeat pattern? Her son choked to death 20 years ago. Eric Garner choked to death 20 years ago. The same exact thing. But remember, the video don't exist. You don't see what you see. Yes, we black women are all ghetto mothers as the society thinks. They're entitled to treat us any old kind of way. They got a problem, a big one. And I want to tell y'all, and I've been doing this for 20 years, the support of the people is there. It's really, honestly, there. Right now, I'm in the midst of doing a tribunal, trying to put it together, a tribunal right here in New York. The plan was to go to Switzerland. I missed that deadline. So now my aim is to go to the UN in September. So I'm asking y'all to listen out and support the Mother's Cry for Justice. That's the group that's trying to do this. And one more thing is I'm leaving. Um, Bratton made a statement here the other day about New Yorkers wanting these thousand cops on the street. I'm saying he threw the people out of the city council for opposing the um, cops. We need to take the street again to let them know we don't want them thousand cops. And I'm sincerely asking every one of you, put the word out, we coming, to stop Bratton from bringing these thousand cops. Correct what you got out here already. Stop bringing more trouble. And while I was listening to them, I was uh, recalling events from our own history. And in our history, um, uh, after the triumph of the Cuban Revolution in 1959, eh, Sucedieron muchos hechos de violencia contra nuestro país. There were many violent acts against our country. Pero también antes de 1959, es decir, durante la lucha revolucionaria. But also before 1959, that is to say, during the revolutionary uh, struggle. La lucha contra el dictador Fulgencio Batista. The struggle against the dictator Fulgencio Batista. Y me vienen a la mente los hermanos Saínz. Dos jóvenes muy adolescentes muertos por la dictadura de Batista. And uh, I recall the uh, brothers, brother Saiz, who were uh, adult, uh, teenagers and were killed uh, by the dictatorship of Batista. Me viene a la mente también nuestro querido Fran País, asesinado en ese tiempo. 
And I also recall our beloved Frank Pais, who was assassinated during that time. Y en realidad, todos los días, amanecían las calles de La Habana con jóvenes muertos, asesinados por la, por la policía y por la dictadura. And the reality is that every day, the streets of Havana were, uh, woke up with dead young men who had been killed by the uh, police and the dictatorship. Y por supuesto, las madres de esos jóvenes no podían quedarse con las manos cruzadas o llorarlos solamente. And of course, the mothers of those uh, young men couldn't just uh, uh, do nothing and, and just cry for them. Algunas de ellas incorporaron a la lucha revolucionaria. Uh, some of them joined the revolutionary struggle. Y, y es precisamente por eso que triunfa nuestra revolución. And that's precisely why our revolution um, was uh, victorious. Por la unión de todo el pueblo. Because of the unity of the whole people. Eh, posterior a 1959, como les decía. And after 1959, as I was saying. También sucedieron hechos de sabotaje en nuestra capital. Uh, there were um, cases of um, sabotage in, in the capital. Y eh, he leído porque, bueno, soy nacida con la Revolución Cubana, es decir, el mismo año que triunfa la Revolución. And I have read, because I, I was born uh, with, with the Revolution, that is to say the same year of the Cuban Revolution. La explosión del barco la cubre. Um, and I've heard of the, uh, I've read about the explosion of the ship, La Cubre. Cubre, La Cubre. La Cubre. Fue un acto eh, de terrorismo muy violento. It was a terrorist, a very violent terrorist act. Porque eh, se produjo una primera explosión. Uh, because there was a first uh, initial explosion. Y rápidamente acudieron los bomberos, el, todo el personal de, 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 o sea, de, de salud. And very quickly, the firefighters and the uh, um, health uh, staff uh, showed up. Y junto a la población, a ayudar a estas personas que se encontraban en estado de, o sea, heridas. And they went, they, they went there together with the uh, people to help those people that had been wounded. Pero la, in la intención fue esa que se agruparan más personas del pueblo. But the intention was to group, to get together more people from, uh, from uh, the town. Porque después hubo una segunda explosión. Because then there was a second explosion. Y entonces fue cuando hubo más víctimas en esa segunda explosión. And then there were more victims in that second explosion. Eh, me recuerdo también la explosión del vuelo de cubana de aviación uh, donde... Um, Sorry. I'm also reminded of the explosion of the uh, um, uh, Cubana de Aviación's flight. Que en su salida, yo creo que no llevaba ni, ni cinco minutos de vuelo cuando se produce la explosión del avión. Which I think had just taken off not even any more than five minutes when it exploded. Donde murieron muchos jóvenes cubanos. In which many young Cubans died. Jóvenes deportistas. Um, uh, sportsmen or, and women. Y la justificación fue que ahí venían jóvenes comunistas. And the justification was that there were communist young men in there. Y eran simples jóvenes deportistas. And they were just uh, uh, sports youth. Y el, eh, el que dirigió toda esta operación, el and señor Posada Carriles, And the person who directed this whole operation, Mr. Posada Carriles. Y no podríamos decirle señor, sino terrorista. And we shouldn't call him, call him sir or gentleman, but a terrorist. Continúa vivo, he is still alive, por las calles de Miami. walking around the streets of Miami. Y las familias de estos jóvenes han sufrido igual que estas madres la pérdida de sus hijos. And the families of this youth have suffered the loss of their children just like these mothers. Eh, recuerdo también el secuestro de uno de nuestros hijos, el niño Elian. I remember also the uh, kidnapping of one of our kids, uh, Elian. Por un grupo de cubanos norteamericanos que no acaban de comprender 
de que la revolución cubana es cada día más sólida. Uh, by a group of uh, Cuban Americans who still don't don't fully understand that the Cuban revolution is more solid every day. Esa batalla la ganamos. That we already won that battle. Está la prisión, o sea, el encarcelamiento de nuestros cinco hermanos que ya afortunadamente se encuentran en casa. There was the incarceration of our five brothers who fortunately now are back home. En fin, podríamos relatar muchísimos hechos eh, en contra de nuestro país. So we could go on and on about a number of events against, uh, situations against our country. Por el simple hecho de decidir nuestro destino. Due to the simple fact of, that we wanted to determine our own destiny. De haber hecho una revolución socialista a 90 millas de los Estados Unidos. Because we had a socialist revolution 90 miles away from the U.S. Y a esa pequeña isla la han declarado peligro para la seguridad nacional de los Estados Unidos. And they have declared that small island a threat to the security of the U.S. Y nos han colocado en una lista de países terroristas. And they've placed us in a list of terrorist countries. Y creo que eh, esto es lo más absurdo que se pueda escuchar. And I think this is the most ludicrous thing you could ever hear. Cuando somos nosotros, o sea, las cubanas y los cubanos, los que somos víctimas de ese terrorismo. When in fact it's we, the Cubans, who are the victims of terrorism. Yo, eh, con mucho respeto, mm, respeto y, y, profundo, y profunda fortaleza de lucha, oh. eh, les doy las gracias a estas madres With much respect, respect and also uh, strength in the struggle, I, um, de, de la que, I, I thank uh, these uh, mothers Por habernos permitido escuchar la verdad. for uh, having uh, allowed us to hear the truth. A truth that we'll take with us in our hearts and minds. Para poder seguir eh, revelando estos hechos contra la población de los Estados Unidos, la población más desprotegida de los Estados Unidos. So that we can continue revealing these facts, uh, these acts against the uh, U.S. population, uh, against those who are um, the least protected. Y les pido que no cesen en su lucha. And I ask you not to stop in your struggle. Thank 
escaparon. Los que no escaparon a mayor llevados a justicia. Y cuando se hizo justicia con esa gente, con esas personas, precisamente por eso ellos aún están violando los derechos de aquí. Pero ustedes van a seguir luchando y van a ganar aquí con, con el pueblo. Eso va a ocurrir. Así que estamos con ustedes. Estamos orgullosos de su lucha, que es nuestra lucha también. Back in the 
the back. It's a photo from Santiago de Cuba in January 1957. And it's a group of women marching in Santiago with a banner that says, Stop murdering our children, Cuban mothers. It was a massive demonstration that was organized in January 1957 to condemn the police murder, like Ike earlier was mentioning, of murdering 15-year-old July 26th member William Soler. But that murder was not an isolated murder. That was what was happening in Santiago de Cuba. That's what was happening in Havana. That's what was happening in, uh, in Santa Clara. That's what was happening with the, the rural guards in, in, in the countryside all across Cuba and had been for decades and was backed to the hilt by the U.S. government until the workers and farmers of Cuba said enough and they organized under the leadership of the July 26th movement and the rebel army and they made a revolution and they brought working people to power and as they have fought for 55 years and as Ariel said they haven't created a perfect society but they've created a society where everyone from the top of top government positions down to all the organizations are organizations that represent and act and speak and fight in the interests of working people to get rid of the age-old and in the case of women millennia old forms of oppression and exploitation that the capitalist system perpetuates and without which it cannot survive and the ruling families cannot make profits. It, the book is called Women in Cuba, The Making of a Revolution Within the Revolution, and it tells the story of the organization that Maricel is a leader of, the story of the Federation of Cuban Women, and how, as Maricel described, it came out, it wasn't just an artificial organization that somebody thought of, it came out of the desire of first thousands and then tens of thousands and then millions of women in Cuba who wanted to be involved in every aspect of social and economic and political life and that's what that's how that organization was formed and that's what it continues doing 57 years later and what it continues advocating on the world scale at conferences like they're doing uh, here today so once again I I thank everyone who's, uh, who, who's, who's been here. The title of the program Iris came up with, Sharing the Struggle, for the leaflet for this program, that's exactly what we're doing. Thank you. Peace. Right on to that, because we know that you're looking out for our comrades. 
And that whole history of Cuba, for people who don't know, uh, the struggle in South Africa, you know, people don't go to Cuban fire by accident there, fighting against apartheid, and a lot of the brothers that were captured. And there's a long history there. And we really need to recognize that and understand that people are involved. Last thing I want to say is hip hop culture is used as a weapon. Um, Zulu Nation had chapters all over this planet, Asia, Africa, Europe, everywhere. Um, we've had Zulus that come to Cuba, have met the youth there, our youth have met there, and using hip hop as that cultural exchange. And we're going to enhance that. Um, we've been asked to uh, start a Zulu chapter in Cuba, and we're on that process now, and um, you're invited to um, meet with us and help us develop that. Uh, Africa Bobada is really excited about that. We're about to start one in Tanzania. Um, those of you who don't have my email, see you before you leave. We're going to have a big program here. We're starting a chapter in Tanzania also. And in Angola. So, um, hip hop is a weapon. Your mothers, you might have seen it graffiti that have been put out by hip hop artists. No, it's not vandalism. It's a, it's a weapon. Okay, graffiti art, or hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics from the street is a means of getting the information. Now, all these pictures here, that's so-called graffiti. Okay, that gets out the message, and that's all over the world. So do not listen to them when they attack hip hop. I'm not talking about the nonsense on the radio. That's a rap. You call them artists pretending. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about hip hop from the streets, where it originated and where it still is. And that's what we do. Peace.
police violence is for all of us to unite and every day more and more, and more of us are united. And as more and more of us learn that in order for the system con to continue, it involves the constant and repeated spilling of blood, the blood of uh, poor black and poor white people. And that is how the system uh, will stay in power, and that is how the 1% will stay in power. And as I said, the uh, solution to that is for us to unite and to bring that to a halt. And that is what we are doing in this, this uh, panel, this discussion today, is, is contributing greatly to that process. Uh, I had a question for the uh, Cuban delegation because the Cuban situation with the recent announcement by President Obama of the change of policy towards Cuba, that is an example that we have to follow. And what I'm talking about is it took the unity of the Cuban people and the, the friends of the Cuban people, which is us, and the, the friends of the Cuban people located in the Caribbean area and the South America, it took the unity of all of us to make the right wing change their position and their policies in regard to Cuba and to tell order Obama to articulate that change. Uh, I just want to ask the uh, Cuban delegation, I have certain suspicions of, about what caused the right wing to change their position and change their policies on Cuba. So I want to ask the uh, Cuban uh, delegates if they could uh, discuss with us and make it clear to us and to the larger audience uh, the, the type, the atmosphere that existed prior to Obama articulating that change of position. We want to know the atmosphere that existed in the Caribbean area and in South America that inclined. And I believe it is the unity of the people that forced the right wing to change their position and to articulate that change of position in regard to Cuba. And I want to say to the Cuban delegation, uh, I love you, my family love you, and the people love you for all the sacrifices that you have made for us and for the entire world. Thank you very much. Coalition and a long time supporter of the fight against police brutality. Um, uh, yes, Miguel once said, the more we resist, the more we're respected. And um, uh, it, it, it is good that uh, uh, the parents, um, um, some just coming into the fight as a result of a recent loss of their loved ones, thank you. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for fighting uh, alongside those parents who've been in the struggle with Ms. Baez, uh, Ms. Young, for uh, several years now. Um, uh, thank you for organizing this meeting and meeting with the Federation of Cuban Women. Um, uh, like uh, Ms. Juanita said uh, a few minutes ago, it's uh, not only that uh, our kids are being, uh, our young people, uh, our relatives, friends being shot down by the police, uh, they're being, uh, uh, through the plea bargain system, uh, they're being, uh, 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 arrested, locked up, um, uh, forced to plead guilty for uh, uh, things they didn't do, uh, for, for petty things, that later on, um, um, as in, in, in the case of uh, uh, Jerome, Jerome Reed, is used to uh, justify um, execution. Um, then after such deaths, the, the, the media uh, tries to assassinate the, the character of the individual painting them as criminals. Um, um, and, uh, Thank you for again for uh, uh, this um, uh, this meeting and um, a question for the delegation. Um, uh, the Cuban Revolution brought about significant changes in uh, um, uh, police relations um, uh, with uh, with the people. Um, uh, if you can say something about uh, what are what what those relations are like today. Um, uh, do the type of things that we, you've heard about today um, um, that that happened uh, here in the U.S. regarding the police and working people, especially people of color, 
uh, what's that relationship like in Cuba? Um, what's the prison system like in Cuba? Um, we hear one thing here, of course. Um, uh, uh, we're inclined to think that that's hardly true. But uh, what sort of things do you find themselves getting caught up in in Cuba, and how do how do Cuban people respond to anti-social problems, things of this nature? Um, thank you. Um, how about today? Told me that when she, Iris Baez always tells her when you when you feel down, don't grieve, fight back and organize others to do the same. And that's what, to me, is the most, I wanted to salute everyone here. Sean, Sheila, Juanita, Tanya, Hawa, Iris, and the others who aren't here, and the ones to come, who the sisters and brothers are gonna teach to stand up and fight. This is part of the resistance that's happening with their oil strike against the big oil bosses. This is part of the mass protest when the, when the grand juries allow the cops to walk with impunity, as people have pointed out. My name is Maggie Traw. I'm running for Congress in a special election in the 11th Congressional District in Staten Island in Brooklyn. In Staten Island, one of my opponents, Donovan, was the district attorney who helped fight for the impunity of the police. But the most important thing here, the Cuban Revolution shows that when the majority of working people stand up and unite and aren't afraid and say, don't give up, keep fighting, that we can build that kind of movement. We have a big obligation, those of us who live here in the United States, to oppose our government's uh, murderous policies around the world, but especially towards Cuba. To, to say, end the embargo now, U.S. out of Cuba, not just close down the prison in Guantanamo, give the territory back to Cuba. We have, we have to, that's part of what I and Seth Galinsky was running for assembly in the 43rd district and also in the special election. That's what we're using our campaigns for, to say we can, we can fight and win on these questions, we can build the kind of movement that can in our own way, in a different country, do what the Cuban workers and farmers did in the 50s that led to the victory in 59. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, my name is Arpeño Camacho. I've been on fire here for the right of immigrants and also of other working people. In Puerto Rico, I've been known and still known as a fighter uh, for independence and and the Puerto Ricans to be the owners of their own destiny, the working people to be to lead Puerto Rico as the case of Cuba showed. But most important is the strength that we get from our real history. The defeat of Jim Crow segregation in this country came to the mobilization of millions, not inside the Democratic or Republican Party, outside, independent of it. That's the key of the Cuban Revolution. That's the key of this defeat of Jim Crow in the United States. The Cubans organized independently of the capitalists, of the landowners, independently of the embassy of the United States, opposed to all those interests. When Fidel Castro writes La Historia Me Solverá, when the July 26th movement organized, he against the right of working people to work. It's against uh, all the monopolies. Again, it's for the right women to have a job. Some, something as small as that. In my country, 500,000 have been forcibly emigrated to the United States because they have no jobs. To work in a in very bad condition in the United States. It's a case of Mexicans with the freedom and democracy of the United States that call the Cuban people terrorists. See people that went to Haiti and they had to pay more than 800 doctors to help the Haitians. They went to Africa to deal with Ebola. The United States brought military people and they're in Africa now dealing with Ebola. I'm very happy to see this communion of the Cuban people with the fighters in this country, in this area. I want to see more like this. 
because the only way that we can organize is to learn it through each other. Basically, in Puerto Rico, we have to learn to organize. We have, we have the history of the federalist campus in Puerto Rico, and the National Party, the thousands that were imprisoned by the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. Estado Libre Asociado, not in free. It's not free, it's economy. But under that state, also, thousands were forced to move to the United States, where thousands were in prison in Puerto Rico, and Don Pedro Aguizu Campo died in prison. In here, in this country, we have millions of fighters, we have mathematics. There's a literature about him there, and not in the back. Why Martin Luther King is different to Martin Luther King? Well, Martin Luther King was a big fighter also, organizer. Martin was from the very beginning clear. The only way we can fight back and win is through our independent organization, in our workers' party, in our community organization. Police reform, in Puerto Rico they have tried police reform for so many hundreds of years. The last, the, the, the last, the, the last three police reformers, Fraticelli. He was in a, 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 a when the thing happened, he was uh, watching the Cubans that were trying to prevent the terrorist attacks in Cuba. Well, you know, what September 11 happened in his own doorstep. The, the terrorists that came from to, to, to attack that, that uh, the, the building, they came from Miami, they came from Florida. This, this, uh, this, this government can care less about working people in the United States. They are a threat. The Democratic Party, the Republican Party are a threat. They have more than 10, 70,000 children in the, on the, the uh, immigration system, in jail. More than one million people deported back to Mexico, breaking families in, in, the, in, in the United States. So basically, basically, the issue is we learn from each other. We have to organize independent of the capitalist, democratic, Republican Party. Same in Puerto Rico, independent of the uh, Popular Democratic Party and the New Progressive Party. We have Socialist Democratic Party here with other parties, organizations, unions that we can organize the fight in the community. of these kids, and we were able, through town hall meetings, through demonstrations, to actually get rid of And we called on Brother Shep, and they came and they supported us, and we reached out to other groups, and we were able to get rid of 
the guy who was in charge, the public safety director. We had we got rid of the two people who like Dean Anthony Jones, who was had broken ribs by just sheer brutality. They were arresting our kids as well for garbage, for things that just gave them records that made them unemployable. And we got the community together through town halls, through demonstrations, through coming and approaching people and letting them see how how this stuff was happening. And the more we spoke out, which you're doing now, the more we had more and more people came up. Mothers with strollers that were being abused by police. You know, people who, normal everyday people, not even just the youth and not just the black and the Latinos, but so many people it had gotten to such an extreme that everybody came together in support of it. So this is possible. It's, it's amazing that you win anything nowadays, but we were actually able to get rid of this chief of public safety. We have a new group in there. We now are the watchdogs, so there hasn't been any more brutality. Things are a lot better, so it is possible. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm so impressed. Uh, you all speak wonderfully, and this is exactly how we did it, through town hall meetings, through getting the voice out. More and more people will get up and share with you, and if you ever need any of us, we're there to support you as well. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Wellington Echegaray, and uh, I'm a Latin American. We were born in Ecuador, been here for a long time. Also work with uh, uh, in the past. I worked with the 26 Coalition, and I'm part of the May 1st. Coalition, also an electrician working for our local three union, number three. And I really congratulate you. My salutes to the to the mothers and the families that I lost. Your family. That's a shame. What's going on over here in this country? Uh, my salute to the to the women delegation from Cuba because Cuba has teach us. So much. Cuba has given us an example and give us a strength to struggle in Latin America, like in Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia. And let me tell you, there's millions of people in support with you. So keep up the struggle. The struggle is with us, and Latin America is not coming back to what it was. Thank you very much. I just wanted to ask, I first met um, Mrs. Reed and um, Mrs. Brown Dickerson at a protest a couple weeks ago in Bridgeton um, against the killing of um, Jerome Reed. And I thought maybe the delegates from Cuba and other people here would be a little interested in hearing from them the kind of response and the kind of welcome we got by the Bridgeton police, which um, was quite striking. Anyway, I was hoping they could say a little bit about that demonstration and, and some of the response of the community and... solidarity and support that we've heard from you in support of our people. Hacia nuestro pueblo, hacia Cuba, hacia nuestro socialismo. Uh, towards our people, towards Cuba, towards our socialism. Nuestro respeto a los dos miembros de las Panteras Negras. Our respect goes out to our two Black Panthers. Eh, Nos detuvimos y quisimos escuchar a, a todas las personas que, que estuvieron interesadas. We listened to everyone who was interested. Y eh, bueno, tenemos aquí tres preguntas para responder. And so we have three questions uh, to answer. Y lo hicimos precisamente porque eh, nuestra actividad en la ciudad de Nueva York es eh, bien activa, ¿no? 
And we did it precisely because our event in New York is very active. Cuando salgamos aquí, tenemos otro encuentro. After tenemos we leave lugar. here, we have another event taking place. Y es por eso que queríamos eh, escucharlos a todos y, y responder lo que nos corresponde. So we wanted to listen to what uh, you all had to say and, and reply. Quería comenzar con la pregunta del joven, eh, apoyo sus palabras, que eh, podríamos atraer, atraer a muchas más personas jóvenes a estos encuentros. And uh, responding to the question from the young, uh, the young man, and I agree with his comments and the need to draw, bring, attract more young people. Esa es una, una batalla que tenemos también nosotras por allá, por nuestra tierra, eh, en la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas. And that is a battle that we too have, that Cuban women have uh, in the Cuban Women's Federation. Incorporar a uh, muchachas jóvenes a, uh, a que conozcan más sobre la organización. To involve young women more into uh, becoming more familiar with the organization. Porque son las que le van a dar continuidad a la labor que se ha realizado. Because they are the ones who are going to give continuity to the work that has been done. Con relación a la inclusión de los hombres en esta lucha por uh, el avance de las mujeres. On the question about involving uh, men in the fight for progress of women. Déjame decirte que no ha sido nada fácil. Let me tell you it hasn't been easy. Eh, somos una sociedad que aún persiste el machismo. Uh, we live in a society where machismo, sexism, uh, continues. Eh, en menos escala, por supuesto. Uh, to a lesser extent, of course. Pero eh, cuando surge la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas, era muy fuerte en la sociedad el machismo. But when the Cuban Women's Federation was born, this machismo was very strong in our society. Y el patriarcado. And the patriarchy. Y, y la lucha de la organización fue precisamente hacerle entender a las mujeres los derechos que tenían. And the struggle of the FMC was precisely to make Cuban women understand their rights. Los derechos que nuestra revolución nos ponía en, en o sea, uh, como, como parte de los programas revolucionarios. The rights that the Cuban Revolution uh, provided women as part of the programs of the revolution. Hubo que conversar mucho con padres, esposos, hermanos. Uh, we had to talk a lot, discuss a lot with uh, uh, fathers, sons, parents. Para que entendieran que, y permitieran que sus hijas, sus esposas o sus hermanas se incorporaran a estos programas de la revolución. Uh, to make them understand and to, uh, for them to allow their wives, their uh, daughters, their sisters to participate in these programs. Por supuesto, contamos también en ese momento y en la actualidad con la voluntad política de nuestro gobierno. Of course, we uh, had the benefit both then and today of the political will and determination of our government. Y había que intencionar la participación de las mujeres en la sociedad. Intencionar, ¿qué quiere decir? Eh, promover. We had to promote the participation of women in our society. Y es por eso que en una de, de las intervenciones de nuestro querido compañero Fidel, And that's why in one of the uh, statements by our dear uh, leader Fidel, dijo que las mujeres estaban haciendo una revolución dentro de la revolución. Uh, Fidel said that women were making a revolution within the revolution. En la actualidad, ya el pensamiento ha ido cambiando. Today, today uh, men people's mentalities have been changing. Porque el machismo quizás esté en la mente de muchas personas. Uh, the machismo that may exist in the minds of many people. Y cuando yo hablo de machismo me refiero a ese pensamiento de que las mujeres somos las únicas 
que hacemos bien las labores del hogar, por ejemplo. Uh, and for example, machismo includes the idea that women are the only ones who can uh, do the household tasks well. O que somos las únicas que le damos la mejor atención a nuestras familias. Or that women are the only ones who can give uh, good treatment to our, uh, take care of our family as well. O que somos las que educamos mejor a nuestros hijos. Or are the only ones who can educate our, our children well. Y este pensamiento hay que transformarlo. But this is the mentality that we have to transform. Y transformar un pensamiento de 200 años atrás es muy difícil. And to change the mentality, the ways of thinking that have existed for more than 200 years is very difficult. Porque solo hemos transitado por 50 años o 55 años. Because we've only gone through 50, 55 years. Por supuesto, ya los jóvenes en nuestro país tienen otro pensamiento diferente al de sus padres, al de sus abuelos. Of course, uh, young people in Cuba today have a, a different way of thinking than their parents or, or grandparents. Y, y la lucha mm, por el avance de la mujer siempre ha tenido como línea que tiene que ser junto a los hombres. And the struggle uh, for the advancement of women has always uh, had the line, the orientation that it has to be together with men. Es decir, no podemos pensar que transformando el, el la mente de las mujeres vamos a resolver el problema. We can't think that only by changing the mentality of women that we can uh, change things. Tenemos que transformar también la mente de los hombres. We have to transform men's uh, mentality as well. Siempre decimos que trabajamos mujeres y hombres juntos. We always say that we're working as men, as women and men together. En la medida que incorporemos a la familia, uh, to the extent that we involve families, a esta transformación, in this transformation, creo que vamos a avanzar mucho más. I think we'll, uh, make much more progress. Y por eso el trabajo con la familia es parte de la labor de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas. So that is why the, our, the work that we do with families is an important part of the work of the Federation of Cuban Women. Y esto lo hacemos a través de las más de 81 mil organizaciones de base que, que cuenta la organización en todo el país. And uh, we do this work through the more than 80,000 grassroots uh, units of our, our federation across the country. Y en estas organizaciones las líderes son voluntarias. And in these uh, local organizations or neighborhood organizations uh, the, the leaders are volunteers. Son mujeres que en algunos casos con más experiencias, otras con menos experiencias, más jóvenes. Uh, these are women, both those with more experience, those with less experience, those who are younger. Pero saben que están representando a una organización de mujeres muy respetada en todo el país. But they know they're representing a women's organization that is very respected in the country. Respetada por toda la labor realizada durante estos 55 años. Respect for the, uh, the work that is carried out over more than 55 years. Pero la, la, la lucha no ha sido fácil. But that struggle hasn't been easy. Ha sido muy difícil. It has been very difficult. Muy difícil esta batalla de cambiar el pensamiento de hombres y mujeres. Uh, very difficult to wage this battle to change the mentality, the thinking of both uh, women and men. Y les voy a poner un ejemplo muy sencillo. And I'll just give you a simple example. En nuestro país, en Cuba, eh, la educación es hasta el noveno grado obligatoriamente. Uh, in, in Cuba, education is mandatory through ninth grade. Pero todos los jóvenes pueden acceder a las universidades. But uh, all youth have access to, the, you know, to go to the university. Por supuesto, gratuitamente. Uh, of course, uh, free of charge. Pero todavía quedan rasgos de maestros y maestras que piensan que hay carreras universitarias o de padres que hay carreras universitarias para hombres o carreras universitarias para mujeres. But we still have a, a legacy, a, a, a throwback in the thinking of some teachers and some parents who think that there are certain careers that are for men and there are some careers that are for women. Y esto no es así. And that's not the case. 
Eso está en la mente de las personas. Las carreras universitarias son para todos aquellos que quieran acudir a ellas, sean hombres o mujeres. Y nos encontramos por, por los diferentes lugares del país que visitamos a mujeres, por ejemplo, que son ingenieras eh, mecánicas. And we find across the country many examples of women who are mechanical engineers, for example. Una carrera que era totalmente para hombres. A career that used to be exclusively for men. Pero les pongo este ejemplo para que ustedes vean cómo influye tanto el pensamiento hacia las generaciones futuras. Just, it's just an example of, of the influences that have existed on, uh, on future generations. Y en eso estamos trabajando. And that's what we're working on. Yo quiero ahora, eh, de alguna manera, comentar sobre algunos de los temas que expresaron los compañeros que, que nos dirigieron la palabra. I uh, just want to comment on some of the questions that were uh, taken up by the people manera, who spoke. De alguna manera, sobre nuestros cuerpos también corre sangre africana. Um, African blood runs through our veins. Yo con 18 años, siendo dirigente de la juventud, cumplí misión internacionalista en Angola. Um, In my case, uh, at the age of 18, uh, as a leader of the Union of Young Communists, I carry out an internationalist mission in Angola. Comencé como profesor y terminé como soldado. I began as a teacher and I ended up as a soldier. Y fui parte de los que de manera voluntaria fueron a Angola a combatir el colonialismo. And I was part of those who volunteered to go to Angola to help fight colonialism. El hecho de que yo haya estado ahí no lo hice ni por un privilegio ni por, una, por un mérito personal. Fueron cientos de miles de cubanos que estuvieron ahí. I didn't do this as a personal, uh, it wasn't a personal merit of myself or a privilege, but it, I did simply what hundreds of thousands of young Cubans did. De hecho, cuando tuve la oportunidad delante de mí, fue que me di cuenta que junto a mi hermano y a mi papá también podía tener esa experiencia. When that opportunity presented itself, I realized that I was able to do that together with my brother and my father. Así que mi familia, al menos tres, fuimos soldados internacionalistas. So in, in the example of my family, at least three of us were able to be international soldiers. Y ese legado lo recibimos <laughs> propiamente de la revolución. And that legacy we received through the, uh, the revolution. Eso lo aprendimos de... El che Guevara. We learned it from Che Guevara. Lo aprendimos de Máximo Gómez, el dominicano. We learned it from Máximo Gómez, the Dominican. Y de tantos y tantos que a lo largo de nuestra historia ayudaron a Cuba para poder hacer la revolución. And we owe it to so many others who, have, through the course of our history, helped uh, Cuba. Por eso cuando en ocasiones eh, contra la revolución se organizan campañas de difamación. And that is why when campaigns of slander are organized against our revolution, Como el caso de la, del tema de uh, for example, around the uh, issue of Asata Shakur, gobierno, a quien yo uh, our government, which I am representing, ha sido muy claro en cuál es la de Cuba. has been very clear in terms of Cuba's position. We have the sovereign right to decide who we give asylum to. Lo que sí tenemos certeza es que en este país se esconden unos cuantos terroristas y el gobierno de Estados Unidos no ha hecho absolutamente nada por deportarlos. Uh, what we can say is that here in, in this country uh, a number of terrorists are, are hiding and the U.S. government has done nothing about it. Por eso es que nos sentimos esta tarde tan orgullosos de poder compartir con esta familia. This is why we feel so proud to be sharing with these families here today. Porque la lucha de ustedes es la misma lucha nuestra. Because your struggle is also our struggle. Es una lucha por la justicia. It is a struggle for justice. No es justo 
que Cuba soporte un bloqueo por más de 50 años. It is not fair, not just for Cuba to face a blockade for more than 50 years. Como no es justo que la policía maltrate al pueblo de Estados Unidos. It is in the same way it is not just for the police to uh, uh, mistreat people for so long. Por eso aquí hoy esta tarde lo que estamos hablando es un asunto de justicia. And that is why today what we're talking about is an issue of justice. Por eso que la lucha de ustedes es nuestra lucha de vida. And that is why your struggle is also our struggle. Y no quiero entenderme, la revolución cubana se ha hecho sobre la base del pensamiento de José Martí y de tantos hombres y héroes de la revolución. Uh, the Cuban Revolution has been made on the basis of the ideas of José Martí and other heroes of the Cuban Revolution. Y uno de los pensamientos de Martí es sentencia que con los pobres de la tierra quiero yo mi suerte echar. And one of the ideas um, and well-known statements of José Martí was, I, with the poor of the land, I want to um, share, throw my faith. Por eso es que estamos aquí compartiendo la misma lucha de And that is why we're sharing this struggle with you here today. Y gracias por darnos esta oportunidad. Thank you for being here.